Hello folks, this is Ali Nassib with another tutorial for you. It's the 4th of July. Unfortunately, we're having rain here outside, but it's a nice and beautiful uh, kind of a rain. Uh, cities are glistening and uh, the park is basically uh, a little bit uh, less busy than it normally is. And I decided I would do a little tutorial on, today, uh, on this day, the 4th of July, which is clearly known for, its, uh, for the Independence Day, the day after the Revolutionary War where United States declared its uh, independence and it became known as a day for change. And I believe also in endodontics we're going through some uh, important changes. The revolution that is occurring in endodontics is a move away from 50 years of condensing gutta percha and uh, finding ways to minimize the sealer interface to an era that is led by improvements in cement technology, specifically sealer technology. And we're moving away from the idea of having to reduce the sealer interface by condensing that aperture to an idea of sealer-based obturation, which was originally became possible with the advent of bioceramics and endodontics. So I want to talk a little bit about bioceramic obturation and what does it mean what are the limitations and what are the advantages compared to the historical obturation techniques that we've used for the past 50 years in endodontics? So with that, let's get started on bioceramic uh, obturation. Now, everybody knows Dr. Schilder. Dr. Schilder has been a great um, uh, father and mentor to endodontics and has put endodontics really on the map. Uh, and Dr. Schilder's uh, theory uh, and concept that was uh, published in his uh, seminal article in 1968 the uh, obturation of root canals in three dimensions was basically that warm vertical condensation is really the only way to get three-dimensional obturation of the root canal. And this concept was prevalent, uh, has been prevalent, has been probably the modern driving force of using warm vertical condensation and thermoplasticizing gutta percha in order to get obturation. However, a question that has always come up in my, my mind, having seen this, uh, has been the question of what is it that really seals the root canal? And the answer obviously is it's sealer. So if it's sealer that has been filling and sealing the root canals all this time, why is it that all the mainstream techniques in the past have been talking about pushing that aperture? They've been talking about pushing it vertically, laterally, in all kinds of directions, uh, but we all know that it's not the gutta percha that's sealing the canal, it is actually the sealer. Well, the main reason this has been the case is because, as Dr. Louis Grossman, another father of endodontics, said in 1988, that the current root canal sealers fall short of ideal. And what Dr. Grossman meant is he went through a series of uh, testing of all the various endodontic sealers that were on the market at his time, and he arrived at the conclusion that based on 10 specific principles that Dr. Grossman described as the properties of an ideal sealer, none of the sealers at the time really fulfilled those specific properties. And Dr. Grossman was basically talking about the sealers of his time, which were zinc oxide usual base sealers and resin sealers and things like that. And this really became the basis for all of our condensation techniques because we always had to minimize the sealer interface. Minimization of the sealer interface has been the driving force of endodontics over the past 50 years. And that has been basically driven by either laterally or vertically condensing gutta percha and essentially getting rid of the sealer that is in between the gutta percha and the canal wall or minimizing its volume. So the question is why? Well, it's because based on the properties that Dr. Grossman described, which were the properties of an ideal sealer, which included dimensional stability, biocompatibility, bond to both dentin and to a gutta percha, antimicrobial properties, flowability, Radio opacity, retreatability, and the hydrophobic and uh, the hydrophilic qualities of the sealer, none of the sealers, zinc oxide eugenol and resin based sealers available at his time, fulfilled these requirements. Just examining them, 
like for example dimensional stability we all know that all the ZO eBay sealer Roth Kerr um, all of these sealers basically um, shrink upon setting as a result you can have pooling of these sealers or else you will end up with a tremendous amount of shrinkage uh, in terms of biocompatibility clearly both zinc oxide eugenol sealers due to the uh,